Hey guys, it's Arcade and today I'm gonna show you how to mix your music and this is gonna be sort of a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can use in your song to make it sound about 50% better right off the bat. So this is not like your standard mixing tutorial where they sort of explain everything in general but we're actually gonna do this step-by-step -step and you can follow these exact steps and exact effects, put them to your song and make it sound better. So this is mainly for beginners who don't know that much about mixing yet, but they wanna have a result right off the bat and improve their mix right away. Also, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later in the video. Now let's begin. I'm gonna play this unmixed future bass track and then I'm gonna show you this formula you can use to mix it. So yeah, here is the preview of the song with no effects and no mixing. So yeah, that is it. You can barely hear anything in the song. It's sort of just like a big pile of uh, sounds and nothing is like nice in there. Everything is just sort of a noise. So now I'm gonna show you how to mix it and just follow along with these steps and you can use it for your track as well. So first thing first, go to your mixer channel. Actually, first thing is that we have sign chaining already prepared. So that's one thing I'm not going to go in detail in this video, but essentially every time the kick hits, the other sounds like the bass and the chords are lowered in volume. That will help the kick to be uh, a bit more obvious in the mix. So you can hear it here. So if you wanna find out how to do that, just check out my other tutorial for sign chaining. It's really simple but it needs to be done first. That being said, if you know how to do sign chaining, just continue in this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the volume of everything. So go to your master channel right here and put Wave Candy on slot 10, which is the last one. And then you have this window and go to presets and choose peak meter. So you have this decibel meter. Now this will show us the decibels of each sound that we play or the whole song, but that will help a lot in determining like how we wanna do this. Essentially, you wanna set the volume of each sound to a certain amount of decibels and the kick being the loudest, then like the chords, the bass and the background sounds. You wanna make sure they sort of go with different volumes. So let's get started with the kick and it's gonna be on minus five. So just preview it alone you can see it's at zero decibels you want to have it at minus five and this doesn't have to be exact but around minus five minus six or minus four so just make sure it's around there i'm gonna go with minus five here now another kick that i have here is sort of this top kick I'm gonna have that at minus five as well. As you can see, that's about there. Then the snare, also at minus five or minus six. Then we have one more clap. We're gonna put that at minus six. So yeah, and then crashes, maybe at minus seven. And hi-hats at minus 10. And as you can see, this hi-hat loop is sort of all over the place because it's a loop and it has different uh, volumes in it already. But as I said, it doesn't have to be exact. Just make sure the average volume is around minus 10. So you can see it's mostly about minus 10. Sometimes it jumps up, but that's okay. And this one also around minus 10. Usually here, sometimes it jumps out, but that's okay. So that's the drums set up. If you have your drums, just uh, set them up exactly the same. Uh, 
Of course, sometimes you want the hi-hats to be more obvious in the mix and stuff like that. But as I said, this is sort of a formula that any beginner can use. So we are not really being too technical here. I'm just trying to sort of show you step by step that you can apply right now. So yeah, the drums are ready. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a site where you can, you guessed it, learn new skills. You can learn a lot of different things, including music production. So yeah, there are tons of classes by professionals about music production. And it's not just short videos like on YouTube, but it's actually full classes that teach you everything in detail. If you already make music and you are interested in releasing it and growing your audience, I would recommend this class by Joel Michael, Grow Your Streams, How to Grow Your Streams on Spotify Organically. So that's a really good one for that. And if you are a beginner or more interested in learning how to use FL Studio, let's just type in FL Studio. There's tons of classes. I would recommend this one by Chester Sky, Music Producer Masterclass. So yeah, that's a really good one for FL Studio users. So if you want access to all of these classes and more, use the link in the description and get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So yeah, just use the link below and enjoy the free trial. And after that, if you are interested, the subscriptions are as low as $10 a month. So yeah, check it out. And now let's get back to the video. Now let's move on to the other sounds. So the leads, the main chords. I have these hyper souls. Maybe you have a piano or pads or something like that. It applies to it as well. Now I have it on mixer track number five. So I can actually change it here. So you can see mixer track five and we go to the mixer five right here. So just lower the volume here instead. And we can do like minus seven for these. Now I usually go by ear, but since this is for beginners, I wanna show you the exact numbers as well. Now the fast bass, go low with it, around minus seven as well. Now we're gonna put some effects on them, so we're gonna change the volumes later, but for now, let's just move them like that. And this sub bass is probably good around minus 10. Sounds fine right there. Now we also have this arpeggio. So arpeggios usually in the background. So minus seven, it's probably all right anyways. And then lastly, this lead. So I want this lead to be obvious in the mix, so I'm gonna keep it at... Well, right now it's at minus 11. I think it's gonna go up actually, but right now we can keep it there. So let's hear how it sounds with some volumes adjusted. Also the vocal, forgot about that one. So let's put that in the background as well at around minus 10. Now let's have a listen. So yeah, really simple adjustments of volume and already it's sounding a lot better. So if you apply these volumes to your song, it will also make it sound better. Also, after you apply them, listen to the song and if you feel like something is too loud or too quiet, you can change it later, of course. So I think like the hi-hats, these ones especially, were too loud. So I'm gonna lower the volume of them a little bit more. So that's how I'm gonna keep it for now. And now let's put some effects on these sounds. And this is pretty much gonna be, again, step by step. You can use these exact same effects for your song and it should sound better. So the first thing is the main chords. So all the sounds that are not the sub bass 
can have the low end removed because we don't really need it and it's just taking up space that the sub bass needs. Uh, I'm talking about the musical sounds like melodies and chords, not the percussion and kicks. Those can stay as they are. But like these chords don't need the low end, so we're gonna delete it. So let's add Fruity Parametric EQ2 and just go to the presets 40 hertz cut and move this like so, so we don't have any sub frequencies. Also, we can add another EQ. I like to add different one for each like major adjustment, but you can do it in one EQ as well. And let's boost the high frequencies. Now, if you don't have hyper sub chords like I do, you can do this for a piano as well or any other sound. So if you have any different sound for the chords, it should also work quite well if you do the same EQ. So I just boost them around 2K and upwards. Next thing I'm gonna use is Soft Clipper, Fruity Soft Clipper. It's essentially like a compression or a limiter actually, and it helps to sort of even out the sound. Without it, you can see the sound is jumping all over the place. But with it, it sort of stays in one line. And it almost doesn't lose a lot of volume, but if you, if you look at the decibel meter, it's clearly lower here, but if you hear, if you listen with your ears, it's almost the same. So that actually helps out a lot as well. We can boost the volume a little bit again. So it's minus seven like, like we wanted in the beginning. So yeah. Also, I'm gonna add some reverb just like so. Keep it like this. So we have that space in there as well. You can do that as well. If you don't want reverb, you don't need to use it. And one more thing I'm gonna add, and this is especially good for chords or arpeggios, is Stereo Shaper. So let's just go here, add Stereo Shaper, and change the preset to Stereoize 2. This is sort of gonna take the sound and disperse it to the right and left speakers, so it's not gonna stay in the middle of the mix and sounds like this. So we can lower the volume again a little bit. Okay, so that's that. Now let's move on to the other sound, which is the fast bass. Again, as I mentioned, we can delete all the low frequencies from the sounds that don't need them. The fast bass is not in need of the low frequencies either, so let's just delete them as well. The same way, 40 hertz cut, just delete it. And that's it, then go to the sub bass. And of course, we're gonna keep the low frequencies here because they are really important. So for the sub bass or any low bass you have, keep the low frequencies there. And we can actually delete the high frequencies instead or just lower them like this. So that's fine for the sub bass. Now for the lead, let's uh, play it. Go to our lead sound. And I actually want the same effects as the chords with a few exceptions. So I'm just gonna move those effects to the leads. And the way you do that, you can either save the whole file, whole chain and load it in the leads, or you can do that manually by clicking each plugin and dragging while pressing save reset S. So just drag it, it's here, and do it with all the plugins. Just like so, but I don't want the stereo shaper actually, because I want the leads to be sort of in the middle of the mix, so they are more powerful there. But one thing I wanna do is put sound goodizer on the leads and that just sort of adds a bit of compression and it's definitely not a necessary step, but it helps a bit in this case. Okay, next sound is the ARPs. Let's put Stereo Shaper on them because they are sort of in the background and Stereo Shaper will help with that. 
and it will actually make them stand out more since uh, they are overpowered by other sounds but if we make them more stereo they will actually have a new space for their sound and they will be more obvious in the mix so yeah that's the arps and the last thing is the vocal let's uh, check the vocal i'm actually gonna put reverb on it just the reverb and lower the dryness uh, if you lower the dryness it will make the vocal a bit more in the background and be a bit more quiet and that also can help if you want some sort of a background sound so yeah that's it for most of the sounds now the last thing is the master channel which some people wonder about and you can also just put a 30 soft clipper in there and it will act as a limiter so nothing will clip and the song like won't go over zero decibels so there will, there will be no distortion and now let's have a listen to the mix track and if you follow these exact steps and setups for each plugin you should actually have a way better mix right now sounds a lot better right now and uh, one more thing i recommend doing if you follow these steps uh, let's take a look at the volumes once more but disable the fruity soft clipper because we need to sort of reset them again since we put a bunch of effects on them let's check the kicks should be the same yeah let's take a look at the chords so yeah the chords are a bit uh, more loud than i wanted so let's put them at around minus nine take a look at the fast bass maybe lower it a little bit just like so sub bass make it a little bit like minus 10 is good the leads lower them a little bit as well to minus 8 or minus 9 maybe lower this as well to minus 7 actually to minus 10 the arp okay okay and now let's have a listen to the finished result and let's compare it to the original as well Okay, that is the finished result. I hope you like it. Let me know if it's at least 50% better, and I think it is. So if you follow these exact steps, like set up the volumes, remove the low frequencies from all the sounds that don't need them, you know, adjust it as I did, you should kind of stick to the same numbers and you should have a better mix. Let me know if that works for you. And yeah, if it were up to me, I would work on this a little bit more and adjusting vo the volumes further, like making the snare a bit louder and stuff like that. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I just wanted to show that if you follow the exact same setup as I do, you can actually end up with a good mix as well. Again, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check out the free trial, link below. And yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.